Okay, good afternoon guys, welcome. Very briefly what we're going to deal with today is we're going to start off with our fundamentals. We're going to have a quick little look at what's important on the overnight. Move on to Yellen and the testimony. Have a look what she said. Make sure that we digest, digest what she said. Make sure we look where the trade opportunities were, but more important, how we can make money going forward, i.e. in the days ahead. We're then going to move on to the market of the day, Eurostoxx 50. Very straightforward technical plan there. I'm going to show you two trade setups on the board. I'm going to show it to you on the charts and I'm going to show it to you on the video. It's always a lot easier in the chart, warranted. You're going to see I didn't trade it because I was trading elsewhere. But when you look back on it, these are the kind of trades you guys have to. These are bread and butter trades for day traders. So I'm going to show you what A, an inside day break looks like. B, a flag continuation trade setup to the tick perfect. <coughs> We're then going to move on to some structure. So just have a look briefly at three markets that are still boiling creating opportunities, again the stocks, the bund and the pound. And then we're going to finish off with just something to get you guys inspired, get you excited to come back tomorrow and make some money. Alright, let's move on. So, briefly in the overnight, <coughs> we'll start with our friends the Greeks. And we came in this morning and effectively the Greeks have now submitted a letter and the letter was approved. So their list of reforms was approved. Again, no surprise. It came as no surprise simply because the fact that the Greeks took so long to submit this letter, i.e. since Friday, suggests to us that whilst they were actually writing up the letter, they were on the telephone to the Eurogroup saying, is this okay, is that okay, is that okay, is that okay? All right. That's why we potentially got the delay. It was meant to be submitted last night already, but only got submitted early this morning. And we've already heard that the Eurogroup accepts the reforms. Now, the important thing, again, we've got to keep up with Greece because Greece is not resolved. They've not received the money and they're not going to get the extension yet. The parliaments have to vote. Now, if we look at the most sensitive of the parliaments or the most likely to reject the current reform package, it'll probably be the Bundestag. We've heard from Finister, Finn Minister Schwabel and the German minister told us that, effectively, he has recommended that the Bundestag approve the deal doesn't mean they will. So keep your ears peeled. It's expected to potentially be put to vote as early as Friday. So Greece is not out of the woods yet. But that is an outlier trade. And then again, we've still got that ELA funding. We heard the ECB say today that they will only look to reinstate the waiver if Greece sticks to their current bailout package. So make sure you listening out if Greece starts to throth up again and they're not sticking to the rules and the Bundestag rejects it and there's a run on the banks, that ELA trade is still very much an outlier. That is a, a black swan type trade opportunity for us as traders. Right, that's Greece in a nutshell. Move on to Feds Williams, one of the doves, a voter. He came out and he said he would not want to rule out a June rate hike. Very, very, very hawkish for a dove to come out and say that he wouldn't rule out a hike as soon as mid-year. Now, the reason why the market didn't move on this is because this isn't new news. There is a general consensus now amongst the doves and the hawks on the board that we're likely to get some form of a rate hike middle of the year. And the market's not too far off in terms of the pricing of that rate hike. We then had comments about a special OPEC meeting coming from the Nigerian minister. So again, we got a very strong response out of oil. Oil moved 50, 60 ticks very quickly off the comments yesterday. Now, the important thing to note, the rumors of a special meeting were squashed. So we know there's no special meeting. The meeting is scheduled for June as is still. However, if there was a special meeting to be you know, drawn up and it came from someone important, some high rocky in the OPEC, you know, uh, enchilon. That could potentially move the markets very, very aggressively. More importantly, the implications, in other words, what does a special meaning mean, is simple. It means that the only reason they're calling the special meaning is because they're worried about the price of oil. So that could potentially or very likely going to cut the production, which is why you saw a 50, 60 tick rally in oil. So if you get it from a much bigger player, you could see oil very quickly do two, three hundred prices and then obviously trend in hope or i.e. buy the rumor, sell the fact when it's confirmed that they cut production. So 
to think about that, get your you know, head around that potential trade opportunity if it ever comes. At the moment, very unlikely it has been squashed. Any questions? Yeah. All the value is not that. Is that good for equities? Potentially. Potentially, yes. Could be a positive for equities. Potentially. But what I would say is equities at the moment are on a very, very strong uptrend. So I would say if oil rallies, it's probably just going to add you know, uh, fuel to the fire. But if it was the other way around, for instance, if oil started going down, do we think that that's going to derail the current equity trend? Maybe slow it down, but whether it will make it go down or not is very, very slim at the moment. Would that affect the dollar, the, the, the oil values, like that, in such a straight line? Why would oil affect the dollar? The wall strip, the dollar's got weak, doesn't it? If, okay, it's the other way around. Oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, so it's, uh, the dollar will effectively, if the dollar's <coughs> weak, oil will rally. If the dollar's strong, oil will come off. So if we saw, for instance, a strong dollar and oil started to go down as a result, is that a fundamentally driven move? Simple answer is no. However, if we see a situation where the dollar starts to sell off and oil starts to sell off, then yes, maybe you might see the equity sell off with it because then it's general or, or genuine oil weakness. And didn't drag the S&P today, oil, even though it was going, it just didn't bother going. 100%. Just very briefly, let's just have a look at oil. Right. That's what we're in, guys. We found a low, and now we're stuck in this little sideways trade. The market's just condensing and condensing and condensing its range, tightening and tightening and tightening. So at the moment, oil's going nowhere fast. It's just accepting values. And markets can do this. If you go look, we spoke yesterday. If you go look at the yen, the yen did this for a very, very, very long time. It can keep within this tight range for however long necessary until someone decides either they want to take it lower or someone decides they want to take it higher. But the day that that does come, you should get some very aggressive moves. Ideally, we would prefer it to that side because you're going to have a lot of longs looking to cover on the way down as the trend is to the downside. Let's move on. Let's get to the Fed. So very briefly, Yellen came out and she said a whole bunch of wonderful things to us. There are our minutes that come off the Reuters. If you want, you can shut the light off so you can have a read of it. Very briefly, I'm not going to go through it all point for point. What I do want to highlight for you guys is these, first, these bottom five headlines. So very briefly, Fed Chair Yellen says, Fed Policy Setting Committee believes it's unlikely economic conditions will warrant a rate hike for at least the next couple of committee meetings. So she used that word couple again. What does she mean by couple? Two. Two. She then goes on in the next sentence. She says, Fed Yellen says, if economic conditions continue to improve, committee will consider rate hike on meeting by meeting basis preceded by a change in forward guidance. So what she's saying, if we change the forward guidance, what do I mean by forward guidance? The Fed will remain patient. That is their current forward guidance. So what she's saying is, if they drop that patient or if they change that patient in any way. That means that the Fed could effectively thereafter do or change interest rates based on economic conditions. The next line, Yellen says change in forward guidance should not be read as indicating Fed will raise rates in a couple of meetings and I think that's the single most important line of this entire meeting over there. What is she telling us in that line? She's telling us that Couple meant to when she explained it to us in the conference we had back in January. She explicitly said a couple means two meetings. We then heard in the minutes that a lot of members on the committee were worried about the implications of having this word patient there. They were really worried that it almost ties the Fed to a predetermined liftoff date. So what did she come and do? She's basically now said that Yellen says change in forward guns should not be read as indicating or raising a couple. So what she's saying is that if we change forward guidance from patient to anything else, it is a step in the right direction. However, it does not mean we are going to hike rates or normalize policy in the next two meetings. And she goes on in the next sentence to explain what she will do. She then says, Yellen says, change in forward guidance should be seen as reflecting the committee's view that it's at the point where a rate hike could occur at any meeting. You all understand? So in other words, in summary, if you want to understand what she told us today, she effectively said that patience can be dropped and it will probably be dropped in March. It does not mean that they will raise rates in two meetings. 
it could mean they're going to raise rates at the next meeting or in a hundred meetings time. So effectively all she's done now, she's removed the idea that dropping patients is a two month barrier. Do you all understand that? Very important to understand because that's effectively now where the Fed leads us. They're likely to come out in March and drop patients. The market's going to take it as hawkish. It could be hawkish because they could lift off as early as the April meeting or the June meeting or the meeting or the July after that. Yes? Was that dovish then? Was that dovish? No, it's more hawkish. Okay, we got a hawkish there. <coughs> because they took out a lot of some of the uncertainty now so they can give themselves leeway. What I would say, you're both right and you're both wrong. There's nothing in there that suggests that it's either hawkish or dovish. She could have done it, as John says, for very hawkish reasons, i.e. because they may want to hike as soon as the April meeting. Or it could be dovish because they, they want to drop patient in the March meeting but they don't necessarily want to hike in June. So it could be perceived both ways. And that is why what we initially saw in terms of market moving is we saw the bonds sell off. We then saw the bonds rally and retrace everything. The net result, however, and that's what we're going to go through next. The net result would be, let's get up a little, let's have a look quick at the market moves. So if we look, we look at these stirs. If we go to stirs deck 16, we initially sold off around about seven basis points. Nice and aggressively, market took it, as John says, relatively hawkish. It got excited by the idea that, hang on, they're, they're almost changing the forward guidance now. They're telling us they're going to drop patients, and, and, and it's exciting. The market then retraced everything and rallied. Not just the seven basis, in fact it wasn't seven, it was five basis points. It then rallied, I think around about 12 basis points to the upside. So the net net result was roughly up five basis points in the Sturge product. Is that a big move? Well, no, not really. A five basis point move to the upside is no indication that the Fed has now become dovish again. What it may be and what you tend to find when the markets do have these little net changes is that there was a little bit of positioning going into the meeting. There was a little bit of a, an idea of you know, Yellen could almost put a, put a dampener on the January minutes and tell us that that was old news and that the Fed's actually doing a lot better than expected. So net net, no real indication from the market as to whether that was hawkish or dovish. Maybe just a little bit of a position unwind. In terms of the dollar, we initially sold off on the dollar, we then retraced the entire move and extended a little bit higher. The dollar on the day is down across the board and that's significant. I'm going to tell you now why in a second. So if you look, the dollar is blood red, down against everything. The other markets, okay, the equities again, not so good as a gauge for monetary policy because who knows why they go, they could go up, they could go down. But net effect, if you want to you know, use some sort of a reason, they are rallying very, very hard right now. So maybe they took it as the Fed's not ready to hike just yet. But net and net, we would see a little bit of a change in the interest rate products and the dollar sold off fractionally. So why is it important to note that dollar move? If we had seen a dovish statement, okay, what you would have likely have seen is the stirs rally a little bit more, maybe push back rate hikes, rate, rate hike expectations a little bit more. So you may have seen that closer to 8 to about 11 ba or 10 basis points, so a little bit further. All right. Where's the dollar? If you look at the dollar, the dollar all day was positive. It was very, very strong, the dollar today, across the board. And then suddenly, this afternoon, not only reversed its up day across the board, but then turned red across the board. Now, the reason I say it's important, I showed you a chart yesterday, the dollar index. Let me get rid of this quickly. If we look at the dollar index right now on a daily chart, we've been sitting inside this little triangular pattern and today we had our fourth little test of this top resistance point. Surprise, surprise, where do you think the dollar is heading now? Back down again. Now we sat in the middle of this range, so what's the path of least resistance for this market? Probably to come test a little bit lower. So again, what I would say to you, if you're going to trade the dollar tomorrow, have an early look at what the dollar is doing. How is it performing against the yen? How is it performing against the euro? How is it performing against the pound? What I'm going to show you in the chart of the day is I'm going to show you all the structure. I'm going to show you what the pound looks like because you could have a very good tradable market there tomorrow based on what the dollar is doing.
today and the structure of it. You all understand that? Great, let's move on. Okay, let's get to the fun stuff. Let's quickly have a look at the video and let's just get an idea for where we could have made some money, where the opportunities were. All I'm going to say to you in terms of trading opportunities, when you get these types of situations where it's neither here nor there, i.e. nothing sticks out, and you're not going to get this just in the, the Yellen, you're going to get this in ECB meetings, you're going to get this in all the central bank meetings, you're going to get it in non-farm payrolls, it's a reversal trade, i.e. the market shows aggression, it shows volume, it shows intention. So we saw strong sell side action across the US 5 year, 10 year stir space. We saw strong price action in the dollar space, sell off i.e. euro sold off, dollar rallied. The market then pulled back and what does it do? It allows people to enter, it allows fresh shorts to get involved. Bang! We then have a secondary look. Once we take out that first resistance point, you are going to get some shorts liquidating their positions, i.e. taking profits. Now the important thing how you trade this and the way to make money out of this is you can either trade pure price action, i.e. trade what you see, or you can be a little bit more fundamentally sound, read the fundamentals, interpret that actually nothing really has changed, and then trade what you see. So that's the pattern. I'm going to show it to you now how it looks in the five year. It took a little bit longer than what it normally does, but I'm going to show you how it looks in real life price action, and then hopefully you guys can go and implement this. You find this on all volatile data pieces, reversal trade setups, and they work beautifully. The target is the starting point. That's where you want to get back to. And then if it takes out the starting point, you sometimes even get further stops. The reason, just very quickly, why do you think we get this aggressive move above there? Well, it's simple. Every local, every retail investor is doing the same thing. They're looking at this and they're not trading what Yellen is talking about. The fast money is just going sell, 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 sell because the price is showing sell, 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 sell. So all the fast money piles in short there. The market goes the second time and then comes back and all those people that sold out or got short need to buy the market back up. And then we get the up move. You all understand that? Excellent. Let's move on to this video. Let's have a quick look here. So, I'm gonna, I traded the 5 year personally, so I'm going to show that to you, but the 10 year is exactly the same. The 5 and the 10 look the same. The stirs look the same. If you trade the dollar, it looked the same. They all had reversal patterns like I've just shown you. So make sure you go and look what your market did. So very briefly, this is the five year. Yeah, I'm just going to get a little bit to the price action. Uh, let's go back a little bit. Come on. Uh, okay. So, scroll down. Let's see, guys. Scroll this down. So let's have a look here quickly. We found the load 17.2 and we get our first little pullback point. Let's see where this market pulls back to the first time. Okay, very briefly, it has already come out now. As you can see, we started up all the way at 22. That was our starting price. And we've now sold off on the news. We've got the dollar. In fact, what we'll do, sorry guys, I'm just going to scroll this down a little bit so I can show you both. Let's keep an eye, we'll keep an eye, we've got the euro next to us, we've got the stirs there, we've got the five year there, we've got the ten year there, and we've got the buns there. So let's have a look where the first bounce comes in there and the first bounce comes in the dollar space. Okay, someone keep an eye on that dollar for me and have a look where that bounce comes in. So we still haven't had our bounce in the five year yet, still very aggressive side. But what we can see if we look at the low is someone's just taken 6,000 contracts at the low of the day. Okay, well, what mark is that? The euro. Yep, there's the 90s there. Okay, so let's see where, uh, what I mean by first bounce, and that was what's the high of the pullback? 52. Okay, so I'm looking at 01s there. It's the highest I've seen the euro come up. Okay, and also bear in mind, look at the stirs. So the stirs started at 32s. We're now trading 27, 26 and a half. So we're trading about five basis points lower from this starting price. Where did the stir start? Stir started around 31 and a half, 30, 31 and a half. Okay, I'm just going to speed this up a little bit so we can uh, go a little bit quicker. Uh, 
so I can make it a little more exciting so you guys can think a little bit quicker. Okay, so I'm still looking at our ones in the euro. That's the highest that's pulled back to the euro. And you can see here, if you look at the five year, look at all this absorption. So someone's taken almost about 20,000 contracts there. So let's keep an eye on the O1s. Let's see how we respond at O1s in that euro. Now, as you can see, we're starting to pull back in the five year now. So we're having our first pullback. Bang! So what do we see at O1s in the euro there? What do we see at the O1s now? Somewhere Go back two frames. What did we see? Somewhere less than six of them. Awesome. So have a look there. Currently, the O1s has got 476 contracts. You see that? So someone's traded only four months, so someone's absorbed 476. Now watch what it does. Reload, 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 reload. Someone, someone's just taken how many? Someone's just taken another 300 contracts. Someone's just piled in on a short and taken 300 contracts. Equally, someone's bought those 300 contracts. So let's see how it responds now. Now remember, markets remember prices. So it's gone through O1s, gone through O1s. Do we think we're going to get an O1? Do we think we're going to get lucky enough? My bet is you'll get our ones again. I haven't looked as my bet is I, I'd be praying I got our ones again. Okay. So now you can see, if we look at the five year, the five years now come back to the, or oh, it's broken above the 17.2, the first pullback point. So we have the euro above 13.01s, we have the five year above its pullback point. Now let's see how the markets respond. Let's keep an eye on that euro. Okay, so Euro gets above those O1s, maybe it gives us a chance, maybe it gives O2s, O3s, maybe if we're lucky. Come on Euro, you've got to be nice, got to be nice. Markets love to remember these areas and see if we can get those O2s, O1s. What do you guys think? No? He's not going to give it to us, is he? Okay, so you can see someone's absorbing in front of those two, someone's absorbing, absorbing, absorbing. Equally, keep an eye on the... 17 twos in the five year. In other words, that's the highest point we've pulled back to on the sell off. Now, notice how we're holding support above it. Notice how in the euro we're holding support above where? Above the very first pullback point we had. Okay? So the lowest tick we've got is sixes, O sixes in the euro. So five ticks higher than those O ones. Okay, watch, 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 watch. Look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. And bang, what is it giving us? O ones, O ones, bang, 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 O ones trade. What does it do? Five ticks inside instantly. Okay? Markets remember these things. Markets, I know it happens in real time, but someone sold 300 at 01s, it's gone all the way bid, come all the way back to 01s, reloaded, absorbed, and suddenly it's now 11 ticks higher, 12 ticks higher, 13 ticks higher. Now, what was the highest tick we pulled back to previously? 14s. Watch the second pullback point now. So the highest tick after the 01s was 14s. Watch the response after 14s. Keep an eye on this, guys, because this is pure price action. This is where the money's made. Okay? Look at the 14s now. Watch the price through 14s. Holds again, holds again, holds again, holds again. Someone selling, someone selling. Uh oh, uh oh, I'm short. Uh oh, I'm short. I'm still holding my short. I'm still holding my short. If I'm short, what's going to happen to me in a minute? If I don't get out, everyone else is going to get out ahead of me. Still holding the 14. So now it's a second. Double top resistance. Double top resistance. What's going to happen? Uh-oh, someone's paying up, someone's paying up, someone's paying up. And, shock horror, we're now above 14s. What's it doing to 14s? Someone's absorbing the 14s. Someone's taking 14s, 15, 14, 15, 14, 15, 15, 16, 17, 16, 15. Holding the resistance. Resistance has now turned to support. Okay, and bang. Suddenly, we're now trading 23s and 24 and 25 and 26 and you're going to see the stops go in a minute and everyone who's short at those resistance points is now starting to pay up one by one by one okay so let's just keep an eye on this for another minute i'm just going to fast forward it two more seconds so we can hopefully get those stops you can see how exciting it is when people pay up okay, again notice how it's holding above those 14s okay let's go back a little second okay 28 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 37, 38, 39, 40. And everyone who's short is now paid up. Equally, if we do the same trade in the five year, you're going to see a similar little response now. In other words, the five year is holding, it's holding, it's holding. And eventually, eventually, someone's paying up the page. Okay, and it's not done. I'll fast forward you a little bit further. Okay, we're back at starting price now, by the way. So starting prices was this 22 area, 22 and a half, that's target. 
and watch what happens now when we go through the 22, 20, 23 and a halves. Notice how someone's panicking a little bit. A little bit of panic in the market. Anyone short now is looking just to scale out at whichever prices they can get. Okay. Are there any questions, guys? Does anyone think that was awesome? Let's get those lights on. Let's get a little bit of excitement. Does anyone look at that and think, fuck, that was cool? Yeah. It's so obvious. When I play a few on a ladder, it's so obvious. But you have to learn the art to reversal trade. And you're not just going to see reversal trades on Yellen's testimony. You are going to see this on non-farm payrolls. You are going to see this on ECB. You are going to see this whenever there's volatility in the market that gets people to position in one direction but then reverses in the other direction because there's someone bigger looking to do something else. Do you understand that? Please make sure you understand the reversal trade. It's awesome. You saw how straightforward technically, I don't even need to show you the chart of the euro. 01s, 14s, both resistance, turn support. Both gave you chances to do the right thing. Both gave you time to get involved too. Any questions guys? Make sure you look at that trade, reversal trade, across whatever market you're trading. I haven't looked at the equities yet, but what I am going to do now is I'm going to move to the equities and I'm going to show you the chart of the day. So very briefly, before I show you the video, I'm going to show you what it looks like. Eurostoxx 50, what's our trend? It's very, very firmly up. So, let's quickly do the medium term trend. You know this little chart that I draw for you every day. It looks very pretty. Where we've been stuck in a sideways market for months. We then broke out of the flag to the upside. And now effectively what we're doing is we're starting to trend to the upside. Now, yesterday, or the day before, which was Friday, when Greece got approved and all wonderful things, we had a trend up day. We know it was a trend because we left value down here and we left lots of single untradable territory there. Yesterday we had what is deemed an inside day. We still left the hole down below, i.e. that little area of low volume where the market rallied away from on the approval of Greece's deal. And yesterday we accepted a value, but higher up. So the trend of this market is still very firmly to the upside. So how does an inside day work? Well, in theory, an inside day, when it takes out the higher bound of the inside day, it should look to continue, i.e. you should look for a continuation pattern. However, you need a couple of things to get this trade to get going. One, you need a little bit of volatility and price and volume. So you need a little bit of speed. Once we take out that high, you need people to start buying or shorts to start covering. If you don't get that, you're very likely to get what's called a failed inside day break. But let's stick with the inside day break for a start. So what we're looking for is we're looking for maybe buy side opportunities through the high and looking to add once we've broken the high. Some people look to just buy once you've broken the high. That's fine. That strategy can work. But obviously, you need to understand where's your stop. You need to have the stop in the right place. The mistake a lot of traders make is they'll buy one tick above the high and have a one or two tick stop. You can't do that. If you're going to play for this trade, i.e. a breakout of an inside day, you need to give it four, five, maybe six ticks. So let it, give it that room to allow it to get going. So what I would suggest is look to buy in for the inside day break and then add on the break. And then ideally, what was very, very nice about the way today's set up was we had the seven year high not too far away, about eight or nine ticks higher. So we had a good sort of lower resistance, which was yesterday's high, which was R1, and then we had the seven year high as our resistance too. So we had two good resistance points to lean on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you firstly what the inside day break looks like. I'm going to show you what it looked like to maybe position before. I'm going to show you maybe where you want to be positioning before maybe on some absorption, but then equally how to add and pyramid the position. Thereafter, I'm going to show you what the chart looked like. It actually did a beautiful little flag. So what it did, in essence, once it broke the inside day, so if that's our inside day, that's the previous all-time high. So once we broke the inside day, we rallied to the previous high. We then came back a little bit and started to do that, which is effectively what? Right. Just another little flag on the one minute time frame. And once we took out that high, we then extended. Now the important thing and why today is the chart of the day is because the extent or the length of this flagpole was 16 ticks. Shock horror, what do you think it did to the upside? 
19 ticks. It did a perfect flag continuation setup. So we got one, we've got the inside daybreak trade. Two, we've got a little flag continuation pattern. Two very nice setups. Make sure you go and chart and have a look at them. Let's go through the video quickly and we can have a look at it. So let's bring on the Euro stocks. Okay, so our inside day is 33. Just want to get to the meat balls of this part. Because a lot of people would say, unfortunately, what I would say is that today was slightly different because we had Yellen. It wasn't as straightforward to just go, oh, well, I'm going to play for the breakout of 33. So I think a lot of the good guys, a lot of the good senior traders, the Luke Shirley's, probably would have been long at this point going, well, it feels like it's going to go. It feels like it's going to go. All right? They were preempting the break. And it probably wasn't as straightforward. But once it started to get going, right, it probably became a little bit easier to trade. Let's get a little bit closer to the juice. Okay. So let's have a look here quickly. As you can see at the moment, it's going but someone is buying it. But equally, we've got someone sitting there taking the offer. So we've got 5,000 absorbed at the high. So again, I know I said to you it's ideal to be positioned for the break, but it probably wasn't as straightforward today. So let's have a look now how it responds. So the first test of the inside day. Was there any commitment there? Bang, someone's reloading the highs. Someone reloading the highs and blip. So let's stop there quickly. Bang. So as day scalpers, what we can do, a potential trade opportunity, is we can look to maybe volume buy through the inside day break. So maybe look, when it starts to trade 33s, maybe be willing to hit the 33s. Right? The reason being, well, we just saw that there's some stops behind the 33s. So if you want to be cheeky, nick a few ticks, maybe scalp it, you can literally lift the threes and maybe put a two tick offer to take two ticks. Two ticks with a 10 lot, guys, 200 quid. Two ticks with a 50 lot is 1,000 pounds. That's what we're after. We're after that quick, easy money, risk reward, yes. When you get a slippage by doing that, like. Okay, 100%. That's why I said you need to buy the 33s, not, stop, not, not a stop entry at 34s. You need to be buying into the 33s. So, in other words, the previous high of the day was 33s. If we go back just a couple of <coughs> frames. Before it blip, let's quickly look at this. So you'll see someone reloads the threes. Okay, so there's 800 there. Go, go, go. Oh, man. Uh, just go back too far. Sorry, guys. Went back a bit too far. Okay, let's go back a little bit. Okay, so let's have a look there. So you can see there's 500 there. Someone lifts it. Now, I'd be hitting now. If you want to hit, you hit now. Because there's no one on the offer. Bang. You have to buy the threes. You buy the fours, or you do a stop entry on fours, you're going to get slippage. So you can't trade it that way. So you need to be buying the threes. So let's look. 33s was our level. Now, if we're going to enter now after the stops, we need to be buying. Do we think we're going to get threes? Should the market be so generous to give us threes? I'll tell you a little secret. If the market gives you 33s, it's probably going down. Okay? You want the market, when it does an inside day break, you want it to show aggression. You want it to show volatility. When a market's being aggressive, trade it aggressive. Don't trade it passive. If you trade an aggressive market passive, it's telling you something. It's telling you, I don't want to be aggressive. Remember that rule. So, 33s, 34s. We need to be buying those 4s now. Buying the 4s, buying the 4s. Notice where it stops. What was the previous all-time high? 39. Okay, so bang. Where's it stopping? Where's it finding, not necessarily resistance, but finding a lack of interest to lift the high? So bang, someone lifts 1,000, and instantly we've got a little bit of a sell. Okay, so one tick extension on the highs. So what are we going to do now? What are we going to form in this market? We've broken the inside day. We know we're bullish. We're above the inside day break. Look how pretty this market is. It's going to be so sweet and generous. Look how nice it is to you. It's saying to you, I'm going to give you a chance. Don't worry. You missed the inside day break. It's okay. I'll give you a chance. I'll give you a chance. I'm going to give you a chance to buy the sixes. You can put your bid there and buy some sixes now. How about if you put your bid there at 35s? Notice what the 35s did. You see that? Went from 1,200 to suddenly 700 contracts. In other words, what? In other words, no one's buying the 36s. Everyone's waiting for 35s and 34s. Everyone wants the perfect risk reward trade. Everyone wants the perfect opportunity to get involved. So, first time bounce is 35s. Let's look what it does now. 35s and goes. Second attempt at the highs now. 35 was the first pullback point. Let's fast forward this a little bit. Let's keep moving. Okay? We're going to have a second look at the 40s. Okay, second look at the 40s. And a little one tick extension. And comes back inside again. So not interested, not keen on it, not ready for that explosive move. OK, 
Okay? What do we know when a market fails on a flag break? Should come back and test the lower bound of the flag. So we know that 35 is the lower bound. Let's have a look what it does. Okay, it's exactly what it's doing. It needs to get shorts involved. Come on. Okay, what's this market doing? You've used the, used the perfect word there. It's just trapping some shorts now. So now it comes all the way back. We know 35 is the low the last time. What do you think is going to be the low this time? 37's trade, 37's trade, so it's made now a little higher low again. So 35's, 34's the first time off the inside day breaks, then 35's, now 37's. It's giving you three opportunities to buy. Okay, now notice, every time it's gone higher, what has it done? Three times in a row now, done it. One tick extension, and instantly sold off. So in your head, you need to be going, the pattern is one tick extension, sell off. One tick extension, sell off. So we've got 35, 34 first time, 35 second time, 37 third time. So where do you think it's going to stop this time? Do we want to see it fill 36s? Hell no, it's making higher lows the whole time, 34, 35, 37. So if I want to get involved, if I want to buy, if I want to play the pattern, we'll buy the 37s then. If it trades 36s, remember what I told you. The market's giving you a less aggressive price, it's probably not that aggressive anymore. Remember that. And let's have a look how it responds now, the fourth time at that high. So 37, look how much chance it's giving you to buy 37. Okay, giving you a chance, guys. Giving you a chance. Giving you a chance. Okay, let's move this on a little bit so we can get to the break again. Okay, now I know, guys, very important. One thing I want to just, just reiterate. This is not easy. This is about seven or eight minutes of pain and torture. But remember, has this market proven a long wrong yet? That's the importance of a stop. Where should your stop be in this case? 31, 32. Awesome. Remember that, because I guarantee you, not just anyone, not just you guys, I guarantee you there were senior traders that made that mistake. They'll be getting out at 37s because they're worried about going two ticks aside. You are not wrong. The market is not no longer bullish if it's trading 37s. It turns neutral if it starts trading 32s, 31s. Then it's neutral. But so long as it's trading these higher prices, it's bullish as fuck. So stay long. Have the balls to stay long and sit through the pain. Because you know what? Watch what happens when you sit through the pain. Oh, unfortunately this video is going to stop now. <laughs> Got two seconds left. Okay. What do you think happened? It went straight from 42s and aggressively took out the bid. And I mean aggressively, guys. Gave you a 10 tick flow to the upside. Easy money. But it required you to do the right thing. Can I switch the lights on please? So in brief guys, make sure you look at that stock. Make sure you go over the patterns from the Yellen testimony. Two very good tradable opportunities. Put them in your playbook. I promise you you're going to see this time and time and time again. If you traded stocks today and didn't make money, that's okay because you've got to see some awesome, awesome price action. Very briefly, let's have a look at some context. I told you about the pound. Okay, the pound is approaching a very key little resistance point now. It's approaching 154.70 area. It's now topped out four or five or six times at this area. I told you the dollar is looking to show some weakness. If you come in tomorrow morning and dollar's weak, that resistance shouldn't hold very long. Now remember, when key resistance goes, are we looking for four or five tick winners? Are we looking for 10, 12 tick winners? No. When key resistance goes, the market continues a trend. 30, 40, 50 pips. Remember that. Know the difference between a trend break, i.e. where I should be getting paid for it, and just a short-term scalp trade. Very briefly, the bund. Let's have a look at the bund. And I recommend not trading the bund, simply because we've got a triple bottom. How often do you see a triple bottom hold in a market? So, very important. A market that's showing these kind of anomalies is showing it for very good reason because we've done 450,000 contracts. It's as simple as that. The Bund, when I started trading, did a million every day. That's how it was. Last year, the average over the course of the year was about 800,000. This year, currently, we've got an average of about 650,000. And over the last couple of days, we're looking at an average of about 500,000. So there's a very lack of interest to trade this market. So why do you as day traders 
want to make up that interest? Why do you want to play with computers? Go play with the big boys. Go play with the institutions and the flows are. Because that's where we make money. Isn't the range a bad Okay. What I would say to you, it's not so much about the range. It's about getting a feel for the direction. The market will show you something bearish, you'll start selling it, and the next thing it'll turn around. And then it'll look bearish, it'll or bullish, it'll feel bullish, the price action will be bullish, and then it just disappears. So it's not a case of you can't trade it, of course you can trade it. But there are better opportunities in other markets, i.e. the stocks. Use your capital and your time wisely. Last thing. Okay. I had a quote here for you. It's a little bit of motivation to get you guys pumped up. Today was slow. I had a tough day. I was bored as hell. I was. I didn't make any money. Okay? But I did learn two awesome setups today. Well, not learn, but I saw them again. I saw that reversal trade. And then equally, I saw the Eurostox. I didn't trade the Eurostox because I was in another market. But I got to see that the Eurostox is showing me time and time again. It's technically trading now. So that gives me information. It gives me an opportunity to come in tomorrow and reinstate or give that Eurostox a good go at the buy side again. It's showing strong trend-like characteristics at the moment. Until it says otherwise, we've got to keep looking to buy it. Keep looking for those aggressive continuation patterns to the up upside. So to leave you, a person who has never made a mistake never tried anything new. So true. Why is it relevant to trading? Well, it's simple. Every one of you here and the traders out there every day is trying something new. You're looking at something new. You're interpreting something new. You're making sense of something new. But a lot of you are hesitant. You're afraid. You're scared to just click, just to try, to be involved. You're never going to learn unless you have that money, unless you have that risk in the market. So what I would say to you guys for tomorrow, make it your goal to come in and learn. Be active. Be willing to approach the market. Just give it a go. Feel the market. Remember, this job is not about making 300 quid a day. We're not yet to make 300 quid a day. We don't sit in this office hot as hell, screaming and shouting for 300 quid a day. If you yell for that, it's not worth it. We yell for those days where we can make 100, 200, 300,000 pounds. That's what we want. But the only way you get there is by learning today, investing one lot today, investing two, 300 quid losers today, so that one day you can make 100, 200, 300 grand winners. Any questions? Have a good afternoon. Cheers. Cheers.